Good morning and welcome to Morning Moments. Thank you for joining us today. I'm so glad that you've taken the time to, to listen to us today and to, to listen to this wonderful interview we're going to have. Today I have a producer and a director. I've had a lot of producers, directors, filmmakers lately, and it's my pleasure to bring another director and producer to Morning Moments. Uh, Christine Elizabeth, welcome to Morning Moments. Thank you so much, Andy. So great to be here. It's uh, great to hear, uh, be with you. Uh, you're there, our, our Florida area, and I know yeah. it's much warmer than Virginia Beach, but you know, uh, it's so nice to to talk to people from Florida. Well, uh, Christine, let me ask you the question I ask everybody: mm -hmm. What do you do, and why do you do it? Well, I have a couple hats. I know a lot of people do, but I'm very passionate about all my hats. First of all, I'm a mom, and that is my greatest, greatest passion and joy in my life. Because from nine years old, I knew I wanted to be a mom, even though I didn't know what that looked like. And uh, and God's really shaped that into what I do throughout my life as my purpose. So I have two primary hats that I wear for a function of um career or ministry or however you want to frame those. Primarily, I do coaching, which is a beautiful thing. I primarily work with people who've gone through traumas, whether it's a trauma to their identity where they don't know who they are, they believe lies about themselves, they have events that have happened that shape who they think they are. And then um, there are actual traumas like physical to their physical body, to their, um, unfortunately, in a sexual nature or to their family, something that's happened that devastates them. And I get to go in and equip and armor them. And it's just so amazing and wonderful uh, to go in to help people who have had maybe medical causes or medical um, symptoms that are all caused psychologically and from these traumas and see them be delivered from it to teach them how what God says about them and how to hear his voice. And it's so beautiful because that was a journey that I had to go through. And so on the flip side, how I got into filmmaking and being a producer and director is so fantastic. It was completely God-given. I did not do anything to say, yeah, that's what I want to do in life. I had created a YouTube channel to give hope um, to people who wanted to overcome, overcome whatever it was, what they grew up with, what they um, found themselves with, the cycles in life that they couldn't get themselves out of. And through that, somehow, it can only be God, people started coming up to me and asking me if I could help them with their video. And I thought, why do you want me to help you with your video? And it just thought, I thought it's funny. And I thought, well, maybe this could, you know, benefit financially and, and I can learn some things. And Lo and behold, five years later, I'm asking to be asked to do bigger projects and learning more. But I'll tell you that God does not let me step too far in because he's going to get all the glory. I did not go to school for this. I did not. Um, I was not professionally trained for this. So God's really got me out on that tightrope <laughs> saying, OK, Lord, I'm trusting you for everything. And the reason why is because of hope. I did not have hope. My trauma and all the things that I had gone through and experienced when I was younger as a child, the things that I went through in my adolescence and young adult years, I didn't have hope. And hope is so powerful. One person's story can make such an impact in, in somebody's life. And I don't know how to describe it any other way, uh, except to say that what you have to say, what you've gone through, even if it's a little piece of... Um, if it's a little thing, you haven't gone through a tremendous trauma, but you've gone through conflict and, and you have a story to share. That is such fuel for the kingdom because in Revelation, it says that we overcome by the power of the blood and the word of our testimony. And that is so important. The movies that are out there right now that really empower and inspire me are all true like true stories. They're based on reality. They have real, uh, real characters that they're based off of. So I'm super excited to be able to do that in my first feature film. And, and that film's coming out, but what's the name of that film? The film is called I am Josiah. I am it's, Josiah. Mm -hmm. It's based off the book written by GW Tolley, uh, which the book is also called I am Josiah. But the beautiful thing is the, the name Josiah means God heals, God supports. And it's 
what God does, right? In the Old Testament, he changes names. In the New Testament, he changes names. And he's not done doing that. We might not legally change it, but he changes it in our hearts. It's amazing. So what's the story uh, about that uh, that you're so passionate about? Tell us a little bit about that story. Well, I think that the reason why I'm so passionate about it is because it echoes the pain in my own past. And I see not just the pain, and so I can relate to it, and I can relate to the stories that are out there. Um, I know this won't post right away, but currently right now we're we're dealing with the shooting in Nashville. And so, and the pain of identity, the pain of not knowing what it is that, who I am, what I'm supposed to do, and just living out of like this mess of resources you know, that we call life skills, which aren't really good because we're not taught how to handle the really serious, hard things. Not all of us, some of us gratefully are, but a lot of us are learning through those hard times and where God meets us. Now for my story, I couldn't imagine being any less desirable to God, where I was, what I was doing, the mess that he found me in. And yet he called me as though I was a precious white lamb, like a spotted white lamb or a spotless white lamb. And that's what I felt like when he embraced me instead of this, this young broken girl who was covered in the muck and the mire that he pulled out and he wrapped in his blanket and took care of and healed and set free. Well, GW's story is the same. It's a, of course a different variation, but that's the most beautiful thing is meeting each other in our pain, in our trauma, in our, the symptoms of those um, effects rather of the traumas that we go through, you know, drunkenness, um, suicide. I mean, many people have gone through these terrible things and the results of them are are ways that um, we're programmed to numb the pain, right? And when we get to the end of that, God is such a shining light and we're so desperate and it's a gift. Desperation is a huge gift and we're so desperate and we look at him and all those lies that we believe that God wouldn't want us, all those things get silenced because we're ready. God has prepared the soil and he is now tenderizing our hearts and planting new seeds and creating new things. So to see that redemptive story is so powerful because just like myself, just like GW, there are other people out there who think there's no way, if you knew what I did, there's no way God would want me. And the truth is that there is nothing that you've ever done or could do past, present, or future that would disqualify you from his love. And so that message, I am profoundly passionate about sharing. You know, when, when you talk about God's love, one of the things that amazes me so much, and I've been, I've been saved for 59 years, and I'm still amazed by that moment when I ask Christ to, in my heart. This, this moment right now, God's not going to love me any more or any less than he does right now. Yeah. There's nothing I could do to cause him to love me any less or nothing wonderful that I could do to cause him to love me anymore. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's a, a, a love that us humans cannot possibly yeah. understand, well, but that's God's love for us. Supernatural love. Oh, such an impact. Yeah. Because we fall in love with people, right? I mean, even our children, they come from us, but we grow in love with them more and more. But you're right, time is not something that is God's constrained by. So it's, yeah, mind blowing every time. There are people out there that has had that trauma that you talked about, have felt used, have mm -hmm. felt abandoned, have felt they were disposed like a a bag of trash that you just put on the curb. Mm -hmm. What would you tell folks that feel that way about their journey and how, how it can be? Mm. Well, first of all, if you're out there and you're listening and you feel abandoned, you feel aborted in a sense, you feel rejected, know that that is not coming from God. There are so many broken people and that's where it's coming from. It's coming from the brokenness of people. And I want to express my deep sorrow that you've gone through it and ask for your forgiveness for these people 
that you could sense a little bit of peace because forgiveness will set you free from the bitterness. And I would say as far as the hope goes, don't take my word for it. I just have one story. But if you go onto YouTube or any of the search engines and you put on stories of hope and testimonies, you will see people who were drug addicts. You will see people who were prostitutes. You will see people who were in lives that you can imagine. You would see people like myself who were in the occult. There's nothing that God does not want to redeem your life from. And the people, and I'm sorry to keep saying this, but we have broken people. They're in the church. They're in the world. They don't know how to take care of everybody, but the Lord does. And the Holy Spirit is a comforter and he is a true friend. And what I recommend is that you find people who have that love and compassion, who you say like, there's something different about them and lean into them because they can lead you to know who Jesus is as the Messiah, as Christ, as savior, as redeemer and take that journey. And it's, it's one of those journeys that it's one step at a time, but it all begins with a request. Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want your Holy spirit. I want you to change my life. And that's it. That's it. We recognize our need for him. We recognize that we can't get to heaven on our own. We can't experience the kingdom of God on our own and we need him. He is our bridge. So if you feel ex abandoned, if you feel rejected, if you feel like trash that's been put out, know that you are not alone and that there are stories of hope to encourage and fuel you on your journey. And it is a, it's a passage of one day at a time. There's some of you that that message was for, and it, it was just in the nick of time. Mm. This is a recorded interview, and you may have heard this interview eight months, two years after we recorded it, but it happened that you listened to it right this minute. God knows who you are. He cares for you, and he allowed you to be in the position right now and he's knocking at your door right now. Mm -hmm. Find, find peace in him and reach out to others. And if you have, have more questions, feel free to reach out to either one of us, but reach out to a Bible believing church near you. And, and if you've made a decision, go forward and tell them I, I want to just share that God's called me and I want to give my life to him. He loves you and he cares for you. I really believe this message was out there for somebody today. Please uh, follow the movie, check out the movie. It's uh, not even out yet. It's, it's, it's still be, it's, I don't, it's probably not even post-production. It's still in production. Right. And yeah. so, uh, so it's still being worked on. Uh, so keep your eyes open for it. Uh, we we're, we've got websites down below where you can see about the movie and, and check out uh, other films and other things that's going to be in the future as well. As we close today, I'd like for you to take a few minutes after this interview is over and, and pray for Christine. Pray that God would continue to use her as a mother, as a director, as a, as a producer, and whatever God has as a coach and whatever God has for her. She needs your prayers, folks, and you need to practice. So pray that God would just bless her and continue to use her in a great and mighty way. Uh, thank you so much for being on Morning Moments today. Thank you so much, Andy. My pleasure. Please pass this interview on to somebody else. Keep coming back and may God richly bless you. <laughs>